Hello and welcome back to the Illegal Pancakes Podcast. Yeah, the only podcast that takes a break and then comes back. Yeah, we are very intermittent. So, today we're kind of circling back to something that we... Well, I guess this wasn't a podcast topic, but it was the topic of one of the first videos that I personally edited for this um, channel, and it kind of shows... Let's friggin' face it, Konami has been pretty crap lately with how they've been treating their popular IPs, whether it's with footage for a supposed HD revamp of Snake Eater that turned out to be for a pachinko machine, or, you know, just dropping the ball in general with everything they've done for the past five years or so. You know, little stuff like that. Between the really crappy screen text and crappy gameplay that's in the background. But Castlevania Grimoire of Souls. Was that a sentence? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this past week it has been announced that the mobile exclusive Castlevania Grimoire of Souls is being dropped by Konami, as in they are removing it from the marketplace. Now it has been out since September of 2019, only in Canada apparently. It still, I guess they still had, you know, microtransactions and everything open for it. Um, it was a free-to-play game, had multiplayer, had some single-player stuff like daily or weekly events, stuff like that, and they were planning to still release content for it, but Konami is apparently pulling the plug. Now, why they're pulling the plug, I don't think anybody really knows, but... The most obvious reason is the game just wasn't making money. Not at all. And if you're listening to this podcast, you probably know that. You didn't spend money on it. None of us spent money on it. We're in America. We couldn't even do that. And that's why this podcast is brought to you by NordVPN. Thank you for... Just kidding. We don't have a sponsor. It just seems like every channel on YouTube is saying NordVPN. So, hey, we're going to say it too. That's free advertising for a thing I will never buy. Uh, okay. But yeah... So going back into what Robbie was saying about the game not making any money. So I haven't found official word anywhere, but hearsay from, I guess, a Jim Sterling video that dropped on, what was that, Friday? Maybe. It was, it was this past week. Was that no one was actually buying the premium currency for the game. You scroll down into the comments of that video and kind of read in a bit, and people are saying, like, yeah, you actually don't need any of that crap that you could buy with it. You can get by just fine. So this is this is a double-edged sword situation, because as gamers, we're all for uh, not needing to use microtransactions to beat the game. But we also want the game to exist and be available in the United States. And other countries, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's like... Why Canada, of all places, I'm, I really don't know. I guess it's a slightly smaller demographic. Well, wasn't there, like, a really popular, like, book series or something about vampires in Canada? What? Like, there was, like, a famous book series. It was, like, really popular, like, ten years ago. They made, like, four movies. And I think one of them had, like, a CGI baby in it. Are you talking about vampires in Canada or something? Are you talking about Twilight? Yeah, that's the name of it. Yeah, Twilight. Like, you're probably trying to cash in on that. You know, that's... Castlevania, Dracula, Canada. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, like no. <laughs> but, I don't know. The thing that I was kind of getting at is, I guess it's a smaller demographic than the U.S. would present. Because Canada doesn't have that big of a population compared to us. Like, I'm actually, I was actually surprised. But it's definitely smaller than America, so they probably see that as, oh, it's a foreign market, English speaking. Let's try it out there, see how it goes. And apparently it didn't go too well. Mm hmm. I know. I, I can remember a few years ago there were actually like videos on the internet saying that there shouldn't be a mobile Castlevania game. I think that was actually on this YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we were right suckers yeah but the, the ironic thing is Konami actually released a mobile version of Symphony of the Night this past year um, it's like only three bucks 
and it's it's the Dracula X Chronicles version of Symphony of the Night, so it has a um, New English voiceover. So it's not the original, unfortunately, but still, it's a Castlevania game on a mobile that you pay money for up front, and it actually plays pretty well. And it was released in the U.S. <laughs> so. Oh, hey, check that out. But It is on there. I'm probably going to buy it. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's only three bucks, right? Mm-hmm. Three dollars, yeah. two ninety nine. Yeah, pretty dang cheap. So you know, maybe maybe if Castlevania or Konami, I mean, wanted Grimoire of Souls to do well, they would just would have gotten rid of microtransactions and just had a flat rate price for the front of it. Yeah, I mean, so. I would have been fine with that, even if it was like a little bit more pricey than like normal. Mm-hmm. That'd be fine if they had the microtransactions like tacked on in addition to that. I don't know. Like, I mean, if they're still going to be pointless, like they were for the soft release, like, nah, just get rid of them entirely. But, <laughs> yeah. Like, if they were actually useful or if they did something important, like, people are still pre- presented with the option, yeah. I don't know. Paying money up front is probably enough money to give Konami. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I mean, they deserve at this point. Yeah, like, barely that. So, yep, they're pulling the plug approximately a year after it was dropped in Canada, which is kind of unfortunate. But at the same time, another sort of related series is kind of on the upswing. So just yesterday on July 10th, NT Creates dropped Bloodstained Curse of the Moon 2. Now, this is... I guess the sequel to the 8-bit spin-off to Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, which is more of a homage to Castlevania 3, like the classic side-scrolling Castlevanias, like on the NES, instead of a Metroidvania like Ritual of the Night was. So if you are a fan of the Metroidvania, Castlevania, vampire-killing, Twilight-loving uh, game series... Do not be in despair because of the failure of Grimoire of Souls because Bloodstained is going to take its place and probably be better. So yeah, it it seems like Curse of the Moon 2 is getting pretty decent reviews. A couple people are upset that they can't actually play the game, so there's probably some annoying day one glitches with it. (laughs) But, I mean, that's kind of expected. They kind of crapped this thing out pretty quickly. Like, I only heard about it, like, a week or two ago. And then... It was out. It's like a Netflix show. Yeah. It's creepy. But yeah, like, compared to the original, it's got new player characters. I think the total is up to... Like, seven or eight now. Oh, wow. Because the original yeah. only had, like, what? Like, four? Yeah, four. You had... Zangetsu, the samurai... Um, then you had Miriam, who is the protagonist, or I should say main playable character of Ritual of the Night. Alfred, an alchemist wizard guy, I guess, who's kind of the replacement for Sypha. And then Jebel, Jebel, I forget how it's pronounced, who is a replacement for Alucard. But now they've added three more characters. Um, one of them is Dominique, who was the shopkeeper in Ritual of the Night. Now she's some sort of, like, spear, or not spear, spear wielder. Uh, There's this, what I think is a dog in a steampunk-esque mech suit called (laughs) Hatchie. Okay, getting a little more creative with its characters. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be a dog in the suit because that's what his character icon looks like. It's just a little (laughs) dog face, like a little, um, oh, what are those called? You know, the doge face dog. Oh, yeah, what type of dog is that? I don't know. Yeah, I forget. But yeah, like his... uh, So it's definitely not a werewolf. Oh, no. Like, his sprite looks like a little steam engine with feet and arms. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Yeah, and then the third is a guy called Robert, who... (laughs) Definitely approve of the name. Yeah, who... uh, like a gun wielder, a gunfighter, gunslinger. 
that definitely does that that sounds like me even though i don't own any guns yeah i shouldn't say gun, gunslinger because i think he has like a flint lock pistol but yeah mm -hmm. it's kind of funny um his like design reminds me a lot of dr Baldhead from the original guilty gear like it's almost 100 <laughs> percent exact it's creepy so yeah um i haven't played the original curse of the moon so i'll probably be checking this out later it looks fun Hopefully I don't have any problems with glitches or whatever when I do. But I'm glad they're um, still creating games. It's like people still want Castlevania S games, and at least someone's delivering on that. Yeah. There's always we'll good. let Konami make the Castlevania animes, and then, what is it, Bloodstain can make the games. <laughs> I don't think Konami's even involved in the anime. <laughs> Which is probably why it's so good. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. So is there anything else we want to talk about? I think that wraps it up. All right. Short video. We are still alive, but just we're we're busy. almost not. <laughs> yeah, we're oh, yeah, busy. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There should be two actual like full made hardcore metal videos coming up eventually. But I'm in the middle of my most ambitious video so far for the channel, so it'll it'll still be a while before I finish that because I'm really trying to make it look nice and polished. Yeah, and we've also been neglecting to actually watch the live-action Uzumaki film to review before the anime comes out. We still don't know when it's coming out. Crazy. We should know by July, though. Well, by the end of July, I mean. Okay, I was going to say it's already July. Yeah. <laughs> So hopefully we'll get that pumped out before the month ends. Okay. It shouldn't be hard to do. Yep. And hopefully it won't be as much of a train wreck as this was. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. This is fun. Yeah, I know. All right. Well, let's close off the podcast. Thank you so much for listening and to making, making it to this point in the podcast. If you did listen all the way through, comment chariots in the comments. And then put a comment for something you'd like us to talk about. We're all we're all open to ears right now, you know? Because, I mean, there's not really anything else going on besides games getting canceled. So, hit us up with those comments. We'll listen. We'll read them. See you then. Bye. Eh. Blah.